Good morning. I'm Pete Najeri, and this is the take once again, the live take once again for Market Rebellion. I'll tell you what, what an incredible week we had last week. I said that almost every single day of last week, and it was all for the right reasons because the way the markets have been shifting around and moving around and this movement and this dislocation oftentimes between the NASDAQ and the Dow, and then suddenly it comes back together and they start moving together. Well, Last week, they were moving together fairly well, but there was some dislocation, at least early on, between the NASDAQ and the Dow. But when we really uh, started looking at most of the day, we were down about 150 points for the majority of the session, it seemed. And then towards the very end, closed off, and we were down over 200 plus points on the Dow. You look over at the NASDAQ, it actually dropped about 70 points, finishing down on the day after being up there in the green, finished down about 50 points or so. What was the reason? COVID. And the COVID numbers, and they continue to grow, and people's concern, and it seems like every day we 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 either are focused on COVID or we're not. And it's the the markets have been going back and forth with this whole thing. And obviously, we've had multiple Mondays. We can add one more Monday to this whole idea of of new vaccines coming into uh, to the COVID world. I'll get to that in just a second, but. I'll tell you what, uh, the, the leading markets to the downside early were exactly the names that you would expect. Norwegian, Carnival Cruise Lines, all those areas where we know when that's shut down, that's going to be a huge problem. Throw in Las Vegas Sands and Wynn and MGM and the rest of those. But it was, a, it was not any one specific area that was just absolutely getting cracked on this down 200 point move and down 50 points on the down. It was very, very coordinated to the downside. I'll give you a great example. Industrials down about a uh, nine tenths of a percent. XLF uh, down about nine tenths of a percent. You've got technology down a little bit less than that. Semiconductors only down about a half a percent. Energy uh, did ease back because energy actually was trading pretty well. But, you know, we had the weakness and obviously the weakness in the industrials, that's going to affect the, the Dow fairly significantly, especially with names like Boeing, like Dow, like Raytheon. And then you look at Lockheed Martin's and some of these types of names when the in the industrial space, just the whole space just kind of moving down together for, for sure. Now, when you look over the technology, we also had the same sort of thing, but very, very minor moves. There, there was not any kind of panic. There was not any kind of uh, overdoing of the market, so to speak. But Apple, Microsoft, Google, Tesla, Facebook, yeah, they were all down. They were all down together. When they're all down together, you're going to see that movement. Obviously, those big, huge market cap names, they are going to have some influence. They did. And that's that was really what was pulling the markets late in the day to, into the red. Now, volatility index, we're still trading right around those 23s. It seems like we've been kind of hanging around the upper 22s, middle 23s. We had a little bit of a spike last week. We got up toward towards 24 and maybe a little bit above that, but for the most part, trade right, but trade in that right in that specific area. Now, what I bring up every single week, and I'm going to bring it up every single day, but 37 million contracts on Friday, that really says a lot. The statement of how much leverage and how much volume and how much we are seeing traded on a daily basis in the derivatives world just continues on and it's been continuing on for a really long period of time this whole year and this actually follows up 18 19 some of those years where we were averaging uh, about 20 million a day well i gotta tell you something what we're doing this year is pretty extraordinary when you're looking at the upper 20 million plus and obviously i just mentioned how we had 37 million on friday we've had many days in the last week or two where we've been at least 33 million or more on a day on a single day so that's been something that did stand out what are some of the names that were leading well apple finally took the reins again and was the leader but barely when you look at the top three really impressive apple about a million one tesla about a million one neo about a million one these are contracts folks this is, it shows you how much activity we are really seeing and the ev market has been on absolute fire last week i brought up here on the take li is another one of those names so it, it just continues you've got that name you've got neo you've got nicola you've got tesla all of these names baba actually traded pretty strong as well that traded nearly three quarters of a million contracts on Friday, throw in Snap. And the reason I want to throw in Snap was that was one of the names that I used last Friday for unusual option activity, as a matter of fact. And we had huge volumes coming into Snap. And we've had volumes in Snap and unusual option activity. I was just taking a quick look. You could go all the way back to April, uh, where we first started. And we were in the very low teens when we started seeing this aggressive buying and positioning and rolling. And this has been going on, as I say, since April, maybe Maybe May we started to see this accelerate, but it's been accelerating this entire way up. Today, that's one of the stocks that's absolutely leading the NASDAQ to the upside. So 
there were a couple of standouts that were actually moving to the upside and, and in the biotech space specifically, it was Moderna, it was Vertex, AstraZeneca, and that's what leads into today because what was today's news coming in? Why was the market actually moving to the upside? Again, another Monday with some vaccine news and this time AstraZeneca. Well, two large studies, scale studies that they were working on and that's something else. And we, we talked about this. We are going to see more and more of this as we've been watching so many different companies and all sorts of partnerships out there as they've been moving on and moving forward and working their tails off to find us vaccines. And at some point in time, obviously, we are going to have not just one, but I think multiple vaccines. And all of them will depend on which is the most efficient, which is the best one out there. As a matter of fact, one of the concerns still going back to Pfizer is the temperature issue that you've probably heard about. And the temperature has to be an extremely low temperature and how long can that last and the sustainability, all the rest of that. So there's gonna be some ups and some downs, but we we clearly, this is one of those ups. We had a pretty nice uh, uh, news there, but the issue is it still looks pretty grim right now because even though we've got these vaccines that everybody is working on and it's showing all of this great progress, the problem is they aren't here yet. And so the problem on top of that is the acceleration of these cases continues as well. So that's kind of the push and pull that we are starting to see. So the opening indications, a lot of that based on this positive vaccine news, we were up a couple of hundred points. Early on, we actually jumped up over 300 points. Now we're starting to ease back a little bit. We're up about 170 points on the Dow right now. We are exactly a little over an hour into the trading session today. And now we're I'm seeing the NASDAQ. It's still in positive territory, but just barely up about six points. It was just up about 80 points in the last 15 or 20 minutes. And we've given that back. And as I say, now up about six points. So a little bit of a push to the downside, a big push on the NASDAQ names. Early on, oil actually got up and over that $43 level. So that was something that was pretty interesting. And obviously the energy space has been explosive to the upside. We've talked about the XLE. We talk about these beta names. The OIH itself was up about 3%. The XLE up about 2%. But I, when I say the beta names, I'm talking Apache, I'm talking Devon, Valero, Marathon, Occidental, all those names really having a very, very nice start to the day, at least to the upside, because we've given up that 43 level in oil, at least for now, and pulled back into the 42s, but still been moving to the upside. And we even without that movement to the upside, we've been watching these energy names consistently hitting on the unusual. And I bring this up all the time because at the end of the day, let's say we have 25, 30 names on the unusual option activity by the end of the day, oftentimes maybe more than that. Four, five, six, oftentimes of those names are going to fall into the energy category. So that's why it becomes a very important part. And we have seen some great movement out of that, by the way. So early leaders, we had Boeing, Chevron, as I mentioned, we talk about some of these energy names moving to the upside financials. You had JP Morgan, American Express, you had Goldman Sachs, Visa, a lot of these names that part of the Dow that was, was really pushing the Dow to the upside. It's still up 180 points as we speak right this second. So we do have that early leaders on the on the NASDAQ side of things. Tesla. Now Tesla up another 6%. That's been on a monstrous move. How about Micron? We had Micron for unusual option activity just this past week on the on the halftime report. That is absolutely moving in a big way to the upside, actually getting up and over $64 a share. Got to be very nimble. You've got to be very disciplined. Anybody who's, when you when we're talking about the world that we are all in right now, we talk about the derivatives world. I talk about 37 million. I always talk about education, understanding. You've got to have understanding. On top of the understanding, you also have to find the discipline. And that's one thing that I think our teachers, our, our mentors really do an unbelievable job is talking about, hey, you've got to have targets, you've got to have discipline, you've got to understand, because there are so many different elements that go into the option pricing that you've got to make those moves. And depending on whether or not, if it's a three month out option, how different is that from a one week out option? An extreme difference. We're talking about theta moves. We're talking about Vega and all of the different Greeks that go into the pricing models of these options. If you have an understanding of that, that absolutely is something that's important. It also helps you a lot when it comes to a lot of what we talk about with this discipline. So we've had some great moves. We've had Snap, we've had Micron, we've had Square is another one of those names moving to the upside. That was up about 5% not long ago, 4.5% actually. Snap up about 5% today. PayPal, NXPI, AMD, NVIDIA all up 1.5% or more. Nice move from these stocks. As a matter of fact, when you look across, we were looking and I just saw the SMH not too terribly long ago. We weren't at new highs, but we were approaching new highs very, very rapidly for the SMH. We talk about 
the technology space that was starting to move up then it started to pull back and it's not it wasn't doing a whole lot it had not moved even quite up towards that one percent level just yet but up about three quarters of a percent early on then easing back as i say but the semiconductor space that's the one that really just continues to have this great move to the upside micron another one of those names obviously as well so the financials industrials those were up early those were up about one percent you got capital one you have goldman sachs you have jp morgan those names definitely powering things honeywell caterpillar lockheed i mentioned those names from last week though they were moving to the downside i'm telling you this this today at least we're seeing a little bit of that powering why these markets are up close to 200 points as i'm looking at the very live move right now up about 15 points on the dow so a little bit of a recover on the on the nasdaq a little bit of recovery on those nasdaq names right now so we talk about technology we talk about a lot of different things we talk about energy a lot i've been bringing that up and i talk about it well i i got to use this one for the unusual option activity for today because i think it's really important just so you understand we are seeing hits every single day. We're seeing three, four, five, six hits every single day in the energy space. So I'm gonna give you a marathon, petroleum. MPC is this the, the ticker symbol. 39.90 was the stock price. We had a buyer of just under 3,000 of this week's expiring. Now, remember what this week is, guys. Got a short day on Wednesday. Obviously got Thanksgiving on Thursday. We've got Friday. We've got all of what's going on into the, uh, th this week. And there's going to be some some oddities to it. We 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 face it every single year. So just understand, this is a week long option, but you really don't even have the full week. But they're buying the 41 strike calls that expire this Friday, the 27th. They were only about 30 or 40 cents going for these right now. But in the energy space, this is a name that's been moving. As I say, it's just underneath forty dollars a share. They're now coming for these 41. So. Volatility index right now as we speak, it's trading right around 23. I'll try to get to a couple of questions. I know everybody's got a busy day in front of them. I've got a busy day myself. By the way, absolutely gorgeous day here in Minnesota. We had some snow over the weekend. We can't figure things out. Then we get a little bit of sunshine. It's been absolutely beautiful, gorgeous day. Enjoy the days. That's part of the discipline as well. Sometimes you just got to walk away from your computer, let yourself get an opportunity to think clearly once again, get back in front of it, and then you're back up and running. So let's see what we've got in terms of some of these questions. Thoughts on MRO? Well, I was just talking about the other marathon. There's multiple marathons, MRO being one of them. You got MPC, the other one. So energy space, I like these names. I am not in that particular name. I am in MPC. We've seen this paper in options on multiple different occasions. I've already gotten into this name. So today's unusual is not the one that I actually own. I own from like a week or so ago, just to give you a little bit of an up, uptake on that. Let's see. Hi, how do you see gold going? Well, you know, it's been interesting watching how gold and silver have been trading. And a lot of people, and we're included in this, the Market Rebellion team, I got to tell you something. Uh, Bitcoin seems to be the alternative side of things as we've been watching that incredible move to the upside. I know a lot of people really, really excited about that. Just always keep your composure. Always understand how fast these moves are. If they're moving fast to the upside, they certainly can move fast to the downside. So just always keep that in the back of your mind, knowing your targets, knowing your discipline, and knowing what exactly your risks are at all times. So, uh, But it seems like gold and silver just have not been able to refuel themselves at all. And it seems as if Bitcoin has definitely taken over on the on the side of alternative. Hi, Pete, COVID-19. I got to zip through that. Oh, are you in those XLF? December 30s that expire uh, on the December 31st. Yes, I am. I bought those last week when we had that unusual option activity. I like the financials. I think you guys know that. You've seen me talk about this time and time again, even when things were dire, even when things looked awful, even when the XLF was trading in the 22s, 23s. I'm a believer in those names. And while you wait, you get paid while you wait. We talk about it all the time here. We have a portfolio we're going to be reviewing later on today, actually in just an hour or so called the cash flow portfolio. And that's exactly what I what I'm oftentimes doing, which is buying stocks, selling calls. That's what I've been doing in the financials for an extremely long period of time. Not just days, not just weeks or months, for years on many of these names. I have added some names as well. Capital One was a name that I added back in the late summer. And I've been by writing that name for quite some time now. Really, really like that name a lot. I think it's a, a great one. And part of the reason is it's not exactly just a bank. As a matter of fact, big portion of what they do is on the credit card side of things in terms of their revenue. So 
Each one of these financials has a different way of trading, obviously, and there's all kinds of differences between a Goldman Sachs even and a Morgan Stanley and a Bank of America and, and, and you know whatever competitor you want to throw, J.P. Morgan, whatever it might be. Oftentimes, you just have to know the inside of what are some of the revenue streams and what are you really looking at when you're talking about specific banks and these mega banks and some of the regional banks as well. And I found myself more and more in some of the regional banks. But yes, I oftentimes don't do these ETFs. I'm not involved in them because you don't get the kind of movement oftentimes from an ETF that you will get from an individual name just by the structure of the product. So uh, on the positive side, I had a lot of exposure there. I decided to add a little bit more. These were very inexpensive options to the upside and gave me some time. So yes, that is a name that I, I continue to be in and I'm in that name right now in terms of the XLF and those upside calls. Is NEO still a buy at these levels? The EV market is really, really incredible. It is absolutely on fire. You heard me talk about that already. We talked about some of the volumes just this past week on Friday. Tesla, NEO, those names were a part of it. We talked about LI last week, Lee or whatever, however you pronounce that one. But, uh, and the movements that we have seen there. Um, I think through the option markets gives you an opportunity. Uh, I, I am not in any of those stocks and I don't know that I have been in, in the stock side of these EV names at all. And if so, it's been very, very minimal. But with the options, gives you a great opportunity oftentimes to be able to use that leverage and have a little less exposure and know what your risk is as you're doing that. If you don't understand what I just said, understand the options world before you jump into those kinds of trades. You need to be educated and I'm not, that's not just a sales pitch. You will get frustrated if you don't understand the options, the way they're priced and, and, and the entire mechanics of what you are getting yourself into. You oftentimes can, it's, it's like when people say, wow, I bought these calls, the stock moved to the upside, the calls didn't move at all. It's because you play, paid too high of an implied volatility for those options. You, did, you didn't do all the research into understanding what goes into the pricing and how what they are versus normal in terms of implied volatility. So when you start to see some of these things and it starts to dawn on you a little bit better about, oh, okay, the implied volatility is extremely high now. Those are oftentimes, and you hear me talk about that, when I see high VIX or high implied volatility, great opportunity to buy stocks, get long stocks and use that volatility against the stocks or just trade the options themselves. But then you're gonna be spreading because you've got to spread off some of that risk of that higher implied volatility. Uh, I am from Mendota Heights and I miss the winters. <laughs> you, well, let me tell you something. Uh, it's been pretty cold. I don't know if you're missing it just yet. It's just the start of the winter. We've already had a couple of big snow drops. We've had, I think at least two six plus inches already. Uh, it's all gone now, it all melted, which is good. It's kind of turned into a beautiful sunny day. So whatever was out there, some of that frost that's melted off. Uh, I love the winters too, but I got to tell you something. Every once in a while, you got to get away and get out in the warm weather, but I appreciate that. And thanks, man. Hi, I'm from Plymouth, Minnesota. I am long stay at home TD. All right. So uh, the, the, the question being asked by somebody from Plymouth, Minnesota, Bob, um, is asking about a lot of basically essentially stay at home stocks. What do you think of those stocks? I, I do think many of those stocks are going to work. And, and the reason I say that is because they, but you have to understand, you got to look at these names. You got to look exactly what their PE is. Do they even have an E? Do they have any kind of earnings? What's the promise of their earnings? All of that comes into, but I think also we will be in a hybrid society. I've said this many times and I continue to think so. I don't know that we return back to the workplace as it was in 2019. I think there's going to be a lot of movement around that and that means that names like Zoom probably got way out in front of themselves. But at the same time, uh, they have been exactly what everybody has been working on and working towards, right? Those stay-at-home stocks, they've had a great run, but I think we will see something much more closer to a hybrid. I don't think we see a complete exodus from a lot of those kind of names. How about Tesla? What do you think of Tesla, Jason? Uh, Love that name. Absolutely love that name. When I see the opportunities, by the way, we did have some unusual option activity today early already in Tesla. Um, but I'll tell you one thing. The one difficult part about Tesla is it's done so well. Stock trades at such a high level, even after these splits and all the rest of it, that when you look at these the, the options themselves, they trade almost at prices like stocks. They're very, very expensive. They are not inexpensive to be able to trade those options in Tesla. So 
I, I find myself when I am involved uh, in some of the other names rather than Tesla, just because with Tesla, oftentimes it does make it a lot more difficult to navigate through because those implied volatilities that are there and where the stock price is makes those options very, very expensive to deal with. Do you like Zoom on this pullback? Um, you heard what I talked about at Zoom. I think it's a great name. I think it is probably overpriced. I think we're still going to be using it in years to come. There is competition out there. There's absolutely no doubt about that. You got teams from Microsoft, you got all kinds of different competition out there. But that being said, we will be in a hybrid society, in my opinion. What's your view on Docu? I love that name as well. I think going forward, we'll continue to see that name being um, as a company being used. But uh, will that slow down? I think it will slow down some. I think, again, these are going to be hybrid names going into the future, in my opinion. Hi, Pete. What's your take on Valet, please? Love all your work. I appreciate that, Ace. I'll tell you what, Valet has been a great stock. An absolute, these rock stocks are the stocks, and you've maybe heard me talk about this on the take if you've watched before. If not, I'll tell you right now, I like the rock stocks right now. What do I mean by that? I mean, I mean steel, iron, ore, uh, copper, you name it, Freeport, McMoran, U.S. Steel, Go through the list. Vale is obviously one of those names on the list. I think there's a that's a really um, an area that has moved, and I think it still has room to move. As a matter of fact, just last week, right after I took off a Vale call that I had on, um, and, and it had a nice move to the upside, took it off. We saw some unusual buying in there, and I jumped back in once again. I believe they were going all the way out. I want to say they were going out to March. I could be wrong on that, but it was a, some unusual option activity that we were seeing just that week last week. I got to get one more, but then I got to really run. I got a lot to do, unfortunately. And I got a, a couple of radio and TV things that are coming up. Uh, not CNBC. I will not be on all week, but I'll be, you will see me here on the take. Uh, Space, S-P-C-E. Love that name, Virgin Galactic. I have owned this stock for a really long time. I've traded both the calls around it, but I've been holding the stock since I originally bought it, that's months and months and months ago, and I've been selling options against it ever since. Is a great example of what I'm talking about, where you've got high implied volatilities because there's concerns, obviously, the moves that we've seen. I'm less concerned, so because of that, I'm willing to be able to sell that upside and give away some of that upside with extreme implied volatilities. Oftentimes, they've been well in excess of a 100 implied volatility. If you don't know what that means, again, educate yourself and try to understand that in terms of where is the stock? Where was the stock? Where was the implied volatility? What levels are these implied volatilities? But I have been selling calls against uh, my space long position in the stock for many, many months now. And it's been really, really great. As a matter of fact, shoot, pretty soon, I think if not, if we haven't reached it, we're getting pretty close to the point where I think we've been getting two or more dollars per option, you know, per, per month when we've been selling options against this. For the most part, been able to get most of those back fairly inexpensively. I mean, really, really inexpensively, sometimes close to zero and almost paid for the amount of stock. If you don't know what I'm talking about, again, try to get educated because I'm telling you, the options world, you know the growth. You heard me talk about 37 million contracts on Friday. We're in for probably a more interesting week and a little bit slower week. Oftentimes around Thanksgiving, it starts to slow down. This is 2020. Things are not normal. Nothing is normal. So it doesn't mean that we won't have incredible volumes this week, but it'll be something that we'll be watching very closely to see, is there going to be volumes not only today, but into Wednesday? And obviously then when we come back Friday, is there going to be volumes or is there going to be a huge pullback? We'll see how that plays out. Folks, have a great day of trading. Love you, man. Market Rebellion. The rebellion has begun.